About 1400 years ago, a man appeared in the Arab Peninsula, claiming to be the prophet of God. And a little girl was forced to be the wife of that self-proclaimed prophet. Early in the 7th century, the city of Mecca in today's Saudi Arabia was the center of idol worship and pilgrimage for the polytheists of the entire Arab Peninsula. Because of its housing, the Holy Temple of Kaaba that contained 360 idol gods worshipped in the region. In the year 613 or 614 AD, Congratulations, Abu Bakr. Thank you, brothers. Thank you. Alhamdulillah. I'm so happy. Thanks to Allah for blessing me with another daughter. Thank you so much, my wife, for blessing me with another beautiful daughter. All praise to merciful Allah. What name should we give to our beautiful princess? She looks like an angel. We will name her Aisha. That's a beautiful name. I'm going to the Kaaba to give thanksgiving to the Lord. Aisha became a remarkable woman in history thanks to the birth of a baby boy in the same city about 43 years earlier, in 570 AD. He was Muhammad, the prophet of Islam and the most influential person in history. Muhammad's father, Abdullah, had died before his birth. Mother Amina gave infant Muhammad away to a Bedouin woman named Halima. Halima raised him in the desert until the age of five and then returned him to Amina. Amina died after a year, and his next guardian and grandfather, Abdul Mutalib, died two years later. This brought eight-year-old Muhammad under the care of his loving uncle, Abu Talib, whence he had to work as a shepherd and help with uncle's caravan trade. Muhammad remained unmarried until the age of 25, extremely uncommon and unexpected in those days. Although his proposal to marry his cousin, Umhani, was rejected by Abu Talib. When aged about 25, Muhammad was employed by a twice widowed rich merchant woman named Khadija to conduct her caravan trade. On his very first travel to Syria with Khadija's caravan, Great, Muhammad, my Sarah, you are ready to go? Come, listen to me. Sir, remember my instructions. Now go. May Allah make this caravan a blessed one. Okay, ma'am. Bye. Bye, ma'am. They should be returning any time. Don't know why I feel so restive this time. Oh, ma'am! We're home! Oh, my Sarah! Oh, Mohammed! You're back? I'm waiting eagerly. How did it go? Perfect, ma'am! You have great news! Tell me, what is it? Tell me! In Syria, Brother Mohammed was resting under a tree. A Christian monk saw him and exclaimed, None but a prophet ever sat beneath this tree! Fantastic! You have more good news, ma'am. What is it? Tell me, quick. Muhammad was riding his camel in front of me. The sun was very hot, and I saw two angels shielding him from the sun. Excellent. This is the news my cousin Waraka is eagerly waiting for. I am rushing to give him the good news. Khadija's cousin, Waraka ibn Naufal, was a Christian scholar who had deeply studied and mastered the Gospels and translated it for the idolatrous Arabs to learn the Unitarian teachings of Jesus. He was also anticipating the coming of a prophet for his people, like Moses to the Hebrews, for turning them away from polytheism, and used to say, How long? How long?
Why you are rushing like this, Khadija? Great news, Brother Waraka. If this is true, Khadija, verily Muhammad is the prophet of this people. I knew that a prophet is expected for this people. His time has come. Thereafter, Khadija proposed to marry Muhammad. And 25-year-old Muhammad married 40-year-old Khadija in 695 AD. In the solemnization ceremony, Waraka eagerly offered her hand to Muhammad, ahead of her real guardian, saying, O people of Quraysh, I have given Khadija, daughter of Kuwailid, in marriage to Muhammad ibn Abdullah for the dower of 400 dinars. Soon, Muhammad, with obvious consent of Khadija, gave up commercial activities and started spending time in a cave of the nearby Hira mountain. And 15 years later, while asleep in the cave, he allegedly saw in his dream that some invisible being was forcing him to recite some verses, who later showed up in the sky and said, O Muhammad, thou art the apostle of God, I am Gabriel. Khadija, my wife, see what happened in the cave today. I'm so scared. What is it, my dear husband? Don't worry, my husband. God will not be unkind to you. This may be the day we have been eagerly waiting for, for many years now. I will rush to Brother Waraka to give the news. Oh, Brother Waraka, I have great news for you. What is it, Khadija? Holy, holy, it is Angel Gabriel who came to Moses before. Lo, Muhammad is the prophet of this people. Where is Muhammad? I will go and congratulate him. My wait has finally ended. He will later go to the Kaaba for offering thanksgiving to the Lord. Oh, Muhammad, what is it that happened? Surely, you are the prophet of this people. It is the great angel Gabriel who came to you. Congratulations, Muhammad. I will support you in your mission. There started Muhammad's prophetic mission for preaching the monotheistic religion of Islam in Mecca in 610 AD, adopting Allah, the supreme deity of the Arabs, as his sole god. His first converts were his wife Khadija, freed slave and adopted son Zayd, and nine-year-old cousin and adopted son Ali. Waraka, despite guiding him to launch his prophetic mission, never embraced Islam and died as a Christian two to three years later. The next convert, first from outside his family circle, was Abu Bakr, a rich merchant and close friend from his caravan trading days. At the beginning, Muhammad could preach and convert people freely. Amidst these happenings, Aisha was born in 613 or 614 AD in the house of Abu Bakr, Muhammad's steadfast supporter and the richest and most respectable among his three dozen or so disciples. Muhammad could gain only about 40 converts during the first four odd years, which slowed after the first wave. Very few people believe that Muhammad, who grew up just like any ordinary boy of his age group, could be a prophet of God. Frustrated, Muhammad started insulting their gods in his verses and words, which angered them. Muhammad also laid a claim on the Holy Kaaba Temple as exclusively belonging to his god, and wanted the polytheistic gods therein be not worshipped anymore. Annoyed, the pagan families of his followers started putting pressure on them for returning to their ancestral faith. The slave converts were subjected to beating and torture by their pagan masters, but the torture was not life-threatening, and Abu Bakr paid up to set them free. In the sixth year of his mission, late 615, early 616 AD, Two high-profile conversions, namely of Muhammad's uncle Hamza, later the Lion of Allah, and of Umar, later the second Caliph of Islam, created a new wave to swell his community to about 80 male heads. In the face of the Meccans' effort to stop Islam, Muhammad sent away the majority of his followers, 83 males and 18 females, to Abyssinia. Only the influential few stayed behind. Islam was breaking up families, separating children from parents, and dividing the community. And Muhammad was persistent as ever in insulting their gods. So, desperate pagan elders tried to reach a compromise with him, that both his Allah and the pagan deities be jointly worshipped in the Kaaba. 
Muhammad rejected the proposal after initially accepting it with the release of two verses, which became known as the Satanic Verses. Eventually, in late 616 or early 617 AD, the pagans imposed boycott on Muhammad's community and his pagan supporters by banning intermarriages and business transactions with them. They were locked away in his pagan uncle and protector Abu Talib's quarter. Thirty-three of his followers soon returned from Abyssinia and joined in. The boycott continued for nearly three years, hardly anything reaching them from the outside. Yet, some of the sympathetic pagans used to send in food and provisions quietly at the dead of night. They also tried to annul the boycott. The boycott left them economically crippled and stricken with hardship and hunger. But Muhammad refused to concede any ground and kept rallying his followers to weather the trial. Abu Bakr, my dear friend, we must stay firm and pass through this tough time. Allah has promised us victory. We will get there, braving all the trials and tribulations. I will always stay by your side, Apostle. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Without you, I could not come this far. Mommy, I'm very hungry. Give me some bread. I haven't had bread for days. Sorry, my darling. We don't have any flour at home. Please bear with it, my girl. Brother Abu Bakr, children in every household are crying for food. We can't take it anymore. When will Allah relieve our hardship? Yes, Brother Abu Bakr, yes. Same here, same here. Same here. Brother Abu Bakr, trusting you, we joined the Apostle's mission, and we have lost everything in his cause. Now our life is threatened by hunger. What should we do, brother? For years the Prophet has been telling us to bear it a little more, that Allah will relieve our sufferings. For years the Prophet has been saying that Allah has made us inheritor of the earth, that dominion and riches will be ours. But when? We are unable to take it anymore, O oh brother Abu Bakr. We have lost everything, our wealth, our trust, and standing in the community. We have no other way to, brother Abu Bakr. True, true brother Abu Bakr, Bakr true. true! Here you are, my brothers. But what's the matter with you all? As if everyone has lost a dear one. Thank you all, my brothers, for sticking together in this period of trial in Allah's cause. Allah will help us get past this. Victory is near. When will it come, Apostle? We can die of hunger in your mission, but we can't bear to see our children cry for food every day. Yes, yes Apostle, Apostle yes. yes! When will I have some bread, Mommy? Some more patience, my brothers. End to our trial and hardship is near. Allah will soon give us victory. Apostle, my dearest friend, Seek a way out of this killing tribulation from Allah. If not for our pagan sympathizers sending us food and provisions at the dead of night, we would all be dead already. True, true Apostle, true. true! Oh brothers in the righteous path, don't you see a clear sign in that? Don't you see how Allah is helping us through our enemy's hand? So, let us stick together and bear a little more. Allah will soon give us victory and make us rulers in the world as He has promised. Whatever it is, Seek the Lord's guidance to relieve this killing trial sooner, my friend, else we all will perish from a hardship or our community will fall apart. Thanks to the effort of those kind-hearted pagan souls, the boycott was annulled in late 619 AD. But preaching Islam had become nearly impossible in Mecca. At this time, Muhammad tried preaching to outsiders who came to various fairs in Mecca but without notable success. Amidst this, a few months after the withdrawal of the boycott, Khadija died, and Abu Talib also departed five weeks later. With no protector in Mecca and his religious mission stagnant, Muhammad made a journey to the community of Taif in early 620 AD to find a new home for his ministry. There, he tried to preach Islam and turn the Taifites against the Mecca, but both efforts failed. After a 10-day stay there, he returned to Mecca and took refuge in the Kaaba. Soon, on one morning, Muhammad's followers found him missing from the Kaaba. He was discovered in the house of Umhani, whom he had proposed to marry 25 years earlier. 
When pressed about where he was overnight, he told them the incredible story of his night journey to heaven. Finding the story absurd, many of his followers left Islam. Others went to consult Abu Bakr, who persuaded them to believe it. For 25 years, Muhammad did not take much interest in commercial activities. Khadija's wealth had nearly dried up when she died. About this time, his disciple Sakran died, leaving his 30-year-old wife, Sauda, widowed. Although not beautiful and charming, Muhammad, suggested by his aunt Kaula, married her in March 620 AD, about two months after Khadija's death. Also in the same month, Muhammad preached Islam to some pilgrims from Medina, who had come for performing Hajj at the Kaaba, and six of them converted. He wanted to move to Medina with them, but they failed to offer him protection and asked him to wait for a suitable time. Oh, Abu Bakr, my dearest friend, I have excellent news. Come hither, O oh, Apostle, what's the good news? Nothing good has happened in the Lord's mission except misfortune for years now. It's real good news for the Lord's mission, my bosom friend. I have made six converts today. Six converts in a day? Is that true? For years you rarely won a convert. How did you do it? Incredible, my friend. The success of your divine mission starts here. It is our mission, brother. Let's hope. This is the beginning of our success. We must strive together in Allah's mission. I hope you will stay by my side until we achieve victory. I will always support you, my dear friend. Okay, see you later, my friend. <laughs> don't cry, don't cry, my little niece. Who beat our little Aisha? She's crying so hard. She has been punished for being disobedient. You cannot beat a little girl like that. Children are angels. Okay, Apostle. I will not beat her again. Don't cry, Aisha. Mommy will not beat you again. My dear nephew, I heard the good news. Here starts the success of our last mission. I don't know, aunt. I'm not so sure. What's the matter with you, Allah's apostle? After so many years, you have such good news, but you look so dejected. Come, I'll give you a massage. I have invested 25 years in this mission, aunt. For 10 years, I have been preaching God's message. Today, I stand with only 100 odd followers. Just the other day, so many of them disbelieved my night journey story and left Islam. I don't know, aunt. How will it end don't up? Don't worry, my son. God has bestowed his apostleship on you and he will help you succeed. I hope you are right, aunt. At 50, my body is losing strength. How will I fight the bloody wars to establish God's kingdom? All my money is gone. How will I support my mission? God has nominated you to be the ruler of the world. He will have his way to make you victorious. If not for my dear friend Abu Bakr's help and support, I could not come this far. He is the only one among my followers left with some means. He is the one whom my followers believe most. Don't know how long he will continue. Oh, Mohammed, why don't you do something so that Abu Bakr can never forsake you? What can I do, aunt? I have no means, nothing. You are not poor or lack in anything. God has made you inheritor of the earth and will help you gain dominion and kingship. Mm, what about this? You marry Aisha. What? I marry my dear friend Abu Bakr's little daughter Aisha? How is that possible? Will her father ever agree? Think about it. This may be your only way. May God find a way out for you. <coughs> Sauda, bring some breakfast for me. Quickly. You look in great spirit today, my dear husband. I'm rushing to Abu Bakr. I have to give good tidings to my dear friend. Good tidings for Abu Bakr? Whatever it is, good luck, my dear husband. Muhammad, my friend, you never come to my house so early in the morning. 
You look in great spirit, too. Good tidings, my friend. Good tidings. Come on in, dear apostle. Let's eat some breakfast first, then hear about the good tidings. Uh, thank you, my friend. Where's your lovely little daughter, Aisha? May I talk to her? Sure, apostle. Aisha, come here, my little darling. You are so beautiful, Aisha. You look like an angel. No wonder God has sent good tidings for you. Good, good tidings, tidings for Aisha. Aisha? Good tidings? Me? What, uncle? Yes, good tidings for you, Aisha. You have been shown twice in my dream last night. I saw a picture wrapped in silk, and some voice said, This is your wife. When I uncovered it, I saw it was yours. I said, If this is from Allah, it will be done. Oh, Apostle of Allah, what do you mean? Yes, what do you mean? It is Allah's wish that your daughter becomes the lucky wife of his beloved prophet. Allah's wish? Why would Allah ask you to marry my six-year-old daughter? Yeah, prophet. She's just a little child. But according to our religion, it is lawful. But you are my brother. My daughter is your niece. How can you marry your niece, apostle? You are my brother in Allah's religion and his book, not by blood. She is lawful for me to marry. But apostle... Don't make Allah angry by rejecting his command. Allah has chosen Aisha for me. Aisha is also engaged to Jubair, young son of Mutim. They are infidels, worshippers of false idols. Allah forbids our marriage with idol worshippers. So, deal with them as you wish, and remember that punishment for defying Allah is painful doom. You have a wife, Prophet. What about her? Will she accept Aisha? Allah has given us the right to take four wives. I can dump her if you want, because it is Allah who has chosen Aisha for me. If Allah has chosen Aisha for you, do as you wish, Prophet. Aisha is yours. I will go and talk to Mutim. Oh, Abdullah, my son, go tell Mutim that I will come to talk about some important matters in the evening. What is it that Brother Abu Bakr wants to discuss so urgently? <coughs> I'm not sure, my wife. This community of Muhammad doesn't mix well with the people like us whom they call Kafir. I'm worried. Abu Bakr may demand that our Jubair converts to their religion for the marriage to go on. Let's wait and see what he has to say. Here comes my brother, Abu Bakr. It's been a long time, my friend. Must be some good news. Come, take a seat. Hello, uncle. How are you? How is Aisha? I will go visit her tomorrow. Brother Abu Bakr, is everything all right? Brother Mutim, I am sorry to disappoint you. The engagement between Aisha and Jubair has to be cancelled. What? Have we done anything wrong, Brother Abu Bakr? No, brother. You is haven't. Is it because our Jubair is not from your religion, brother? You may think so, sister. Brother Abu Bakr, our community has been very tolerant and accepting of others. Religion has never been a barrier to social relationships amongst us. Must you abandon our tradition of tolerance and acceptance for the religion of Muhammad? But if you want, I will let Jubair join your religion for the sake of his happiness, brother. That is not all, brother. The Apostle of God wants to marry Aisha. I can't reject his command. I'm really sorry. Muhammad wants to marry Aisha? He is an old man, 50 years old, and your daughter is only six. How can you even agree to such a marriage? You are destroying your daughter's life, brother Abu Bakr. I'm helpless, brother. He is the prophet of God. God has chosen this marriage. The privilege Allah has bestowed upon his beloved apostle must be fulfilled. I'm really sorry, brother. Let it go, my son. I will find a more beautiful princess for you. Sauda, where are you? I have great news. What is wrong with you, Sauda? Has a relative of yours died? Why weep over a kafir's death? One enemy less for Allah. I know your good news. I thought I'm the only one you love. Sauda, I married you only because you have none among the believers to look after you, and none of my disciples has means to marry and support you. God's mission must succeed. For that, nothing is more important than my marriage to Aisha. I've lost your love. Now I'm only worried about what the future holds for me. We will see to it as it comes. For now, be sure to treat my little Aisha well. She's most important to me. And be sure to be present at the solemnization of the marriage tomorrow. Oh. 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 I have no time for this. I will have to go. Give the good news to the believers. Oh. Oh. 
Today is the best day of my life. Sauda, where is the new set of cloth I bought for today? Here it is, Apostle. I've kept it nice for your big day. Wow, I have never looked so great. Go, Sauda, rush to my new in-law's house. I will be there soon. I must look like the most handsome groom for the most beautiful bride in the world. Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, it feels great. I'm ready to go. Oh, Apostle, it's time. Let's go. Yeah, let's go, Apostle. I understand your pain, Sister Sauda. Allah has put our life and livelihood at the mercy of our husbands. We have to make sacrifices for their success. Thank you for your kindness, sister. Let's get Aisha ready. The Prophet will be here soon. Come, my darling. We don't have time. Come quick. No, Mom, no. I want to play with my friends. Come, my darling. We don't have time. Quick. Mom, why so many people are in our house today? Why am I being dressed up? Don't know, my darling. You will see. I hope God will protect you. <laughs> What's wrong, Mom? Why are you crying? Don't worry, Aisha. It is the biggest day of your life. You're the luckiest girl in the world. Oh, Brother Abu Bakr, we are here. See how handsome our groom looks. They are here. The groom is here. Oh, wow. You were my bosom friend. Then you became my apostle and savior. Now you are my son-in-law. Nobody will be as dear to me as you. Same here, my friend. You will be my dearest, my right hand. Dad? Come on in, everybody. Oh, um Abdullah, are you ready? Yes, my husband, we are coming. What's happening, mom? Where are you taking me to? Don't worry, my little darling. Everything will be all right. We will always protect you. Don't worry about her. She is just a little child. My wife, let's get started. Wow. Oh, wow. 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 All praise to Allah, merciful to the believers, who has made us the best among the people of the world. Muhammad, the apostle of God, the greatest man ever, has sought the hand of Aisha, daughter of Abu Bakr. Bear witness, O oh believer brothers. I am happy to offer my daughter Aisha's hand to the Apostle of Allah, the loftiest man ever. Since Allah has chosen Aisha to be the Prophet's wife, let this marriage be most fruitful for the Apostle's mission. Oh, wow! Great! Wow. Congratulations! Great. Congratulations. Great. Congratulations. Let's have some sweets and celebrate this glorious occasion. You are the most beautiful girl in the world, Aisha. Today is my happiest day. You will be my most beloved wife. Let's go to the Kaaba, my friends. I will have to give thanksgiving to Allah for blessing me with this glorious marriage. Okay, let's go! Okay, my sweetheart, stay with Mama. I will come back in the evening to see you. Oh, Muhammad, what is the matter with you? You and your brothers look delighted today. I have come to give thanksgiving to Allah, my Lord of the Kaaba. Thanksgiving? Thanksgiving for what? That's none of your business. Let's go express our gratitude to the Lord for his bounty upon us. What a shame! What a shame! What a disgrace! Muhammad, what kind of disgraceful prophet of God you are? How can you at 50 marry a six-year-old child? It's Allah who has chosen Aisha for me. Allah has chosen a six-year-old child for you, stinky old man. My foot, you have become a lecher. You, enemy of Allah, may Allah strike you with thunder. Oh, Abu Bakr, we've always treated you with respect. How can you destroy your little daughter's life in this manner? How can you agree to such a marriage? Ignore these enemies of Allah. Stay fast in Allah's cause. He will give us victory and make us rulers in the world. Then, these enemies of Allah will pay a heavy price for their arrogance and abuse. Oh, Abu Bakr, we have always regarded you highly for your kindness and generosity. Your brothers also call you Asadik, the true one. How could you become so greedy beyond all limits after falling into the trap of this fake prophet? 
Haven't you called Muhammad Al-Amin the trustworthy? Yes, indeed. So, it is you who have forsaken your judgment and conscience. I trust Muhammad as before. My prophet will never lie. My nephew Muhammad was such a nice boy. After falling in the grip of this devil whom he calls Allah, he has degenerated beyond redemption. He has lost all sense of morality. You believe in the false morality of your false idols. My God is the true God. My God's morality cannot be the same as yours. My mood has been spoiled by these enemies of Allah. Let's go, my friends. Mom, what's happening today? What was happening in the morning? I feel scared, Mom. Don't worry, my loving daughter. We will always protect you. Everything will be all right. Oh, Abu Bakr, my brother. Here I come. Come on in, my friend. Your mother-in-law and niece are waiting for you. He is here. Don't worry, my little child. Be strong. Be strong. What is happening, Mom? Who is here? Why are you scared of me, my little sweetheart? You have to live your whole life with me. Mom! 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 I'm scared! Don't be scared, my little darling. He is your husband. Mm. He will protect you. Husband? What? You will understand when you grow up. Aisha, you are still playing with dolls? You are the wife of the Apostle of God. God hates dolls. She's only a little child, Apostle. Okay, Aisha. You can play with dolls until you reach puberty. After that, no more playing with dolls. Let me go, Aisha. You spend your precious first night with your husband. Mom, please don't leave me alone. I want to go with you. Sorry, my darling. I can't stay with you. You are now the prophet's wife. You must sleep with him. I'm afraid, Mom. I'm scared. Please take me with you. Sorry, my girl. Your destiny has been written. She is a little child apostle. Be gentle with her. I'm the apostle of God. You don't have to teach me this. I know how to deal with a little child. Don't worry, my little wife. I will be gentle with you. I will not hurt you. Mom, Dad, don't leave me alone. My husband, how will our little girl take it? Don't worry, my wife. Allah has chosen this marriage. He will guide the apostle to deal with her justly. Come on, my love. Don't be scared. I will be very gentle with you. Uncle? What are you doing, uncle? Why are you removing my clothes? I'm not your uncle anymore, Aisha. I'm your husband. Please, uncle. Please. Don't worry, my little wife. I will be very gentle with you. What are you doing, uncle? What are you doing? Oh shit, it seems you are not ready for it, my little darling. Never mind. Just open your thighs, open your thighs. My thighs? Why, Uncle, why? Come on, just do it. What are you doing, Uncle? What are you doing? Please stop. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, you're the best, Aisha. I love it. Best what, Uncle? What did you just do to me? Don't worry about that, little girl. I'm so scared, Uncle. Until you reach puberty, I will enjoy it in this manner, using your thighs. I will never hurt you. Oh, God, I'm late. I have urgent things to do. Mom, Dad, I'm going now. I will come back in the evening. Where's my little darling? I hope she is fine. Come on, wake up, my little child. Hope you're all right. Where did you go for the whole night, Mom? Don't know what Uncle was doing with me. I was in pain. I was so scared. I'm so scared Don't of him. Don't worry, my darling. I will never leave you alone again. As for his religious mission, good news came during the next Hajj season. Those six Medina converts came with six more men to pledge allegiance to Muhammad. But they failed to show courage for taking up arms to protect him and give him refuge in Medina as requested by him. So, their pledge on this occasion became known as the Pledge of Women. Muhammad sent with them a Meccan disciple, well versed in his creed, for instructing them in religious matters. This turned out a huge boon. During the next Hajj, 76 Medina residents came and pledged allegiance to Muhammad. This time, they even pledged to take up arms to protect Muhammad with their life, like they would protect their women. Muhammad had been waiting long for this opportunity. He immediately ordered his followers to migrate to Medina. Almost all of them migrated over the next two to three months. Then Muhammad and Abu Bakr departed with only Ali and the women of their families left behind. They departed a few days later. 
Upon arrival in Medina, Muhammad first built a communal living quarter for his migrated disciples. His house was attached to a mosque, which became known as the famous Prophet's Mosque in Medina. Members of the two local pagan tribes, namely Khazraj and Aus, embraced Islam quickly. But the livelihood issues started biting his community. Already impoverished, they could bring very little from Mecca, and it was spent in setting up houses. In the beginning, they could find work with the richer Jewish community, but the Jews' refusal to embrace Islam created tension with Muhammad. This reduced work opportunities at Jewish establishments. Pangs of hunger intensified. About this time, Aisha, aged nine, Don't be scared, my girl. Nothing has happened to you. This is natural for women. Today is a great day for you, my darling. You've become a complete woman. Abu Abdullah, go give the good news to the Prophet. He didn't come to sleep with her for a long time. This must be the day he has been waiting for. Okay, look after our loving daughter. I'm rushing to give the great news to the Apostle of Allah. Great news, my son. We are going through great hardship, Dad. What good news can there be? This is the day you have been eagerly awaiting for years now. Our little Aisha has come of age. She has her menses. This is indeed good news, Dad. You haven't gone to sleep with Aisha after we migrated. Go, bring your little wife home. She is ready. I don't know, Dad. Our mission has seen remarkable success in the past few months, but poverty and hunger is killing us. Except you, none of the emigrants have any means. Don't worry too much, my dear Apostle. Allah has already given us great success. We are a big power now and growing. Allah will have a way out for us. Now go, bring your little wife home. I can't, Dad. You know my situation well. I have nothing to give Aisha as dowry. Don't worry about that, Apostle. I will arrange it for you. We are on a clear path to victory, dominion and riches, as Allah has promised. Pay me back when you can. If that is the case, by Allah, I will bring Aisha home. Allah has chosen her to be my beloved wife. I must do it. Thank you, Dad. Sauda, I'm going out to inform everybody about the good news. I will bring my dearest wife home in a few days. Aisha, come here. Must get you ready. Get ready for what, Mom? I want to play with my friends. Let me go. You have grown up, Aisha. You have to go to the in-laws and you can't play with dolls anymore. Come, my darling. He will be here any time. We will have to give you a beautiful bridal decoration. What is happening today, Mom? Oh, Brother Abu Bakr, the groom is here. Oh, Apostle, after a long time, you came to our house. I'm delighted. Come on in, my son. Mom, why is Uncle here today? I feel scared again. Don't leave me alone with him, Mom. That's your destiny written by the Lord, my girl. Don't be scared. We will protect you. The Prophet will be good to you. Um Abdullah, are you ready? Yes, we are. Come on, my darling. Come on, today is your wedding day. My wedding day? But nothing is happening, Mom. Not a camel, not even a goat is slaughtered. How can it be my wedding day? We are very sorry, my girl. We hope to have a big celebration for your wedding. We are in great hardship now, but don't worry. One day your husband will be the king. You will have anything you want. These are your relatives. May God bless you with them and bless them with you. Aisha, my dearest wife, take this. Dowry for you. It's getting dark. Enjoy the big night, Apostle. Let it be the most memorable day of your life. Bye. Yes, enjoy it, Apostle. Bye. Thank you, my friends. Bye. We have to go, Aisha. Blessed be this night to you. Goodbye. Aisha, my dearest daughter. Tonight will be your most memorable night with your husband. My son, be gentle with her. She's still a small girl. Yes, Apostle of God. She is a little girl. Please be gentle with her. Don't worry, Mom, Dad. I will. Oh, come on, my darling. I am eagerly waiting for this biggest night of our life. Come on, darling. 
Open your legs. Open your legs. That's it. Pain. That's it. Pain. I can't take oh. it. I can't take it. Mom. Mom. I can't take it. You'll be okay, my uh, dear. I'll be uh, gentle with you. Pain. Just a little pain. pain. I can't take You're it. With it, I can't my take darling. It. Oh my lord. Oh my lord. Pain. Pain. I can't take it. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die, mom. Mom. Ah. 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 You. Are the best, Aisha. I've never enjoyed it so much. Oh, you will be my dearest wife. <laughs> Wake up, Aisha. Wake up. We have to go home. Where's my little Aisha? Wake up. Wake up. You have to go home. Go home means what? This is my home, Mom. Sorry, darling. From today, your husband's home will be your home. But our door will always remain open to you. We will always protect you, my girl. Here are all your things. Please follow the apostle to your own house. From today, we will not be there to guide you, my child. You will have to look after yourself. Have you put my dolls in, Mom? I don't know how I can live away from you. Mom, Dad? Have not I told you that you can't play with dolls anymore? And don't worry, we will come to visit you. But I'm a little girl. Why can't I play with dolls? Because God doesn't like dolls. God doesn't like small children play with dolls? What kind of God is that? Don't talk too much, Aisha. Listen to what your husband says. You are ready to go. You are a grown-up woman, Aisha. You still don't know how to take care of your valuables. She is only nine, my son, but she is very clever. Be patient. She will learn fast. Welcome home, Aisha. Welcome home. Congratulations, Apostle. Welcome home, Aisha. Thank you, my friends. Thank you. Allah has been immensely generous to me. All thanks to Allah. Take it, Aisha. Go inside. Sauda, here comes my dearest wife. Make a place for her nearest to my mosque. You find another room for yourself. Come, my little sister. I'm eagerly waiting for you. Come, I will set up your bed. Don't worry, Aisha. I will look after you, like your mother. We will be a team together. Oh, Aisha, where are you, my dearest wife? Come, it's our time for bathing together. Sorry, Apostle, today I can't. What is the matter with you, Aisha? How can you say no to your husband? By God, I will never dare to say no to your orders. Oh, Apostle of Allah, but I have my menses today. I'm sorry. Have a bath with Sister Sauja today. I don't want Sauda. I love bathing with you only, so come, quick. How can I, O oh Prophet? Did not Allah say women and menses are unclean and must not go near their men? Yes, Allah has. Then how can come I disobey on, Allah and come near you, O oh Apostle? I am the Prophet of God. Nothing can make me impure. Just put on a lower garment and come, quick. I'm hungry. As you wish, Apostle. Don't tickle me, Apostle. I'm not feeling good today. No, Prophet, no. I don't feel good today. Sauda, we're almost done. Is the lunch ready? It is, Prophet. We are coming. married an old woman? Mm. Why didn't you marry a virgin so that you could fondle her? She is beautiful. When she grows up, and if I am still alive, I will marry her. So, Apostle, Allah permitted only you to marry and sleep with as many women as you like? Yes! It seems to me your Lord hastens to satisfy your desires. Oh, Brother Abu Sufyan, do you know that Muhammad has married your daughter, Umm Habiba? What? He already has seven wives! That stallion snows will not be restrained. What are you doing, Apostle? You are fasting! You can't suck my tongue! I am the Apostle of Allah! I can do whatever I want! 
Nothing can spoil my fast, so just open your mouth and let me suck your tongue. You only pretend to be the prophet of God. Hey, do you know the prophet is going to marry again? Wow, now he will have 11 wives. Lucky man. <laughs> <laughs>